Scott just takes out some toad venom and starts smoking it. And he's like, oh, that's actually, yeah, that's animal based. Okay, it's fine. Right. I told you that running is a natural, it, it, it's a natural high. It helps me get close to God. That in the LSD, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, right. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because we're shockingly unqualified for useful stuff. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath and right Heath. Welcome back, Donald James Parker is Fuck back. I'm yeah, so Chip Gramps again. Film. <laughs> Normally, I'd be furious, but he is perfect in this movie. <laughs> And sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Donald James Parker! Yeah, it's one of those weeks. We've <laughs> been looking forward to this one. But another thing we've been looking forward to, we're excited to welcome a special guest, Mascus. Drew from YouTube's very own genetically modified skeptic is joining us today. Drew, welcome to God Awful Movies. Hey, happy to be here, but I'm ready to be pretty tortured by this. We'll we'll see how it goes. I, I, I might make it. I might. You make already it. watched it, so yeah. The hard <laughs> part is so so. You're not as excited about Donald James Parker as these guys. DJP. There were enough substances in me when I watched through this thing a couple of times that I was very excited by the end. But <laughs> okay. now I'm stone cold sober. Oh, do you want to take a couple minutes and get some substances? Now I'm picturing sweet, like scientifically minded Drew, just like waving his fists at his computer. <laughs> Come on, Donald James Parker! Oh, fuck it. Oh, fuck it. oh Donald James Parker definitely made me break character. My brand is being nice, and I, I, I turned and I was channeling Noah by the end. Trust me. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna make this tough on you. We're gonna make it hard. So tell us, Heath, officially, what will we be breaking down today? We watched in Gramps's shoes. It's the story of how a born-again grandpa reunites with his family, and he makes them all love Jesus with his amazing little arguments and by showing off his amazing long-distance running skills. Yep. It's <laughs> Chariots of Liar. <laughs> <laughs> well done. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if it's very obvious that you haven't spoken to your daughter or grandchildren in 20 years <laughs> and you'd like to... Live out the fantasy of proving to them how right and awesome you are. You will love you're this Donald movie. James Parker. Yeah, you're Donald James Parker. It's Donald James Parker's saddest power fantasy. And in the last movie we watched of his, his friends and him beat up Antifa in a mall. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we should point out for those not, you know, all the way up to date on the Rossetti verse that this is not the first movie that Donald James Parker has written and starred in where my daughter won't speak to me is a major plot point. <laughs> so mm -mm. I think it might just tell us something. His daughter not speaking to him is the feat of Gwen Tarantino. <laughs> <laughs> Out of curiosity, is this the first Donald James Parker movie where he's trying to fuck his granddaughter? I think so. I think there, it's not the first way he's trying to fuck somebody. I don't remember that, but I'm going to guess I'm going to guess it's still no to your, to answer your question. <laughs> I will say this, there's not a single movie we've watched of his where a child under 18 doesn't very clearly explain to the camera how virile and attractive he is. <laughs> yeah, and he usually has his arm around that woman, at least occasionally. Lots of touch. That yeah. happens about 19 times in this movie. It might be the <laughs> highest number, but that always happens. Yep. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst censor blur. In yes. the movie. So it, this doesn't matter to the plot. It happens right near the end. There's a scene and in the very background out like in the trees all the way in the background behind some field behind a high school. There's a rectangle completely blurred out in like partially the sky, partially over the trees in the background. I can't imagine what the fuck that is that they had to censor out. I like to think that it is in adult video store billboard. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that would make sense. I think it's honestly the name of the school where they were doing that. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, the school is like, you can't not. Nah, right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. One second. Yeah, you can absolutely use our school. Let me just Google you real quick. And no, no, <laughs> Donald James Parker. In, in my head, it was like local atheists who hate this guy in real life trolling him. <laughs> okay. And they had like, I don't know, like a drone with a giant dick poster on it. Like <laughs> Banner. Yeah. Stuff while he's trying to film. Follow the entire production, yeah. They were just Amazon drone delivering a giant dildo in the background. Yep. 
the secular world we live in. My favorite thing about that sensor blur is that it carries over to the next scene for no reason, like just accidentally. Yeah, they forgot <laughs> to get rid of it. And then it's just on the back of a guy's head. Yep. <laughs> it's just desperately clicking the small X on the sensor <laughs> bar. <that he's> made. <laughs> so I was going to go with best worst death. I'm not going to spoil yes. anything now. But there is a dramatic <laughs> demise that is just chef's fucking kiss. I, Oscar that's, worthy yeah. by DJP. <laughs> The people who wrote 13 Reasons Why were like, come on, man. (laughs) So, Drew, did you have a best worst? Oh, I would say best musical score by Cicadas. I mean, move over Hans Zimmer. They've been working 17 years on this shit, and it paid off. (laughs) (laughs) To say that the Cicadas actively heckled Donald James Parker during one of the scenes in this movie is not an understatement. Oh. There might as well be cicadas like, boo, boo, bad movie, boo. (laughs) Okay, I I have another, though. It's right in the climax of the movie, too. But speaking of climaxes, I would say that the other nomination I would give it is best orgasm announcement. I mean, I'm crossing the finish line. (laughs) Definitely. Drew, I told you that's what I say when I come in private. <laughs> now you've blasted it. Like out. I don't yeah. think I can. I don't think I can finish anymore without that playing in the background. To be honest, yeah, I like to set up a finish line just to, you know <laughs> near sex so I can break it. That's yeah, yeah. One time we went to a shoe store that was being opened. Anyways, we're not allowed back there. I'm gonna go with <laughs> best worst fantasy. Now, I I already touched on this, but just to be clear, Donald James Parker's fantasy of reconnecting with his daughter is that she's in such desperate financial straits that she begrudgingly allows him back into her life for money. Right. Right. <laughs> and and tells him that she loves spending time with him as, as And never yeah. ever tells him she loves him. It's <laughs> oh. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I look forward to Chip Rossetti movies like the kids look forward to Christmas and shit. So we're going to keep the break brief. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the sad fantasies that are in Gramps' shoes. Come on. Come on. You got to jump for the coins. I know I have to jump for the coins, Drusifer. You know, my full name isn't Drusifer, right? Hey, Eli, Drew, where you been? We we were uh, waiting for you guys to record more of the podcast. Oh, sorry. I was just showing Drew my backbone. Uh, Eli, what did we say about nudity for guests on their first appearance? No, 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 no. Not that backbone. Backbone is the newest game-changing essential that transforms your iPhone into a handheld console. So you can play anywhere, anytime. Simply plug in your iPhone to the backbone and enjoy console quality controls with responsive buttons and triggers, clickable analog sticks, and more. And you can play Xbox, PlayStation, PC, and App Store games. Oh, wow. So it turns your phone into a professional style controller so you can play your favorite games on the go? It sure does. I use it to play stuff on Apple Arcade, play stuff from my computer with Steam Link. I can even play my PS5 games anywhere in my house beautifully and seamlessly. I actually got a backbone before they became a sponsor because I heard about it on a podcast and I bring it with me whenever I fly or travel or even if just got a second of downtime in the house, but I don't want to boot up my computer or console. Okay, but what if you don't own a console? No problem. Stream hundreds of games like FIFA, Halo, Minecraft, and more through cloud gaming services like Xbox Game Pass, NVIDIA Geoforce Now, and Google Stadia. That's a lot of games. It sure is. Go to playbackbone.com slash awful now to order your backbone until June 30th and get free access to over 350 console games and perks, including one month free of Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, one month free of Apple Arcade, two months free of Google Stadia Pro, and three months free of Discord Nitro. Find your next adventure at playbackbone.com slash awful. Hey, do you think that I could get a backbone because I'm on the ad and everything? No, Drusifer. That's still not my name. Druella? Yes, Drew is short for Druella. Yeah, how'd you guess? I'm like wicked smart. You got to jump for the coins. I know, I need to jump for the coins. Press the jump. Hey, podcast listener, I'm No Illusions. I'm Heath Henright. And I'm Eli Bosnick. As you may already know, it's Matreon this month. That's the time of the year when we ask you to consider pledging or increasing your support for our podcasts over at Patreon.com. But of course, we want to keep it classy. Of course. Please give me your money. Oh, God, please. There it is. That's why if you head over to Matreon.com, that's M-A-Y-T-R-E-O-N.com, you'll see tons of fun goals for you to help us hit for our live stream pajama party in July. Do you all have any idea how expensive mm. speech therapy he goes twice a week? But most twice. but most importantly, you'll be helping make our shows possible 
and supporting everyone who works here at Puzzle in a Thunderstorm. From Morgan, our editor, to Tim, who runs our social media. And the clothes, he just grows out of them at 12 times a second. So head on over to Matreon.com and support a show or increase your pledge. We literally could not do these shows without your support. So if you've been meaning to toss us a buck or two an episode, there's never been a better time. I have eight credit cards. Eight. They're all maxed out. Again, okay. Again, that's Matreon.com to show your support. Does he really have eight maxed out credit cards? I'm, I'm sure he does. It's, it's best not to think about it. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up on Donald James Parker jogging. That's going to be about, I'd say, conservatively 18% of the movie, so get used <laughs> to it. My first note is, make sure the movie captures that I run gracefully like a deer. <laughs> Donald James Parker. <laughs> yeah. And they, they use slow-mo yep. for this. Slow, we're watching running in slow. There's a reason marathons don't have slow mo replay when they put it on TV. They don't, there's a reason you don't watch marathons on TV very much. It's so boring. <laughs> running in slow mo is walking, guys. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> also, had, uh, my first note was music brought to you by eight year old singing along with her music box on the fly. <laughs> <laughs> so we see how incredibly athletic Donald James Parker is for his age. And then we cut to Amy. This is DJP's daughter in the film. And she's on the phone with the bank. They want to foreclose on her house. My favorite Christian movie trope is instant uncompromising debt, as though there isn't an entire predatory industry based on giving you options. Right. Right. All Christian movies, they just get one phone call that they're coming for the house in your kidneys. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we're foreclosing on your house. It, there's a wrecking ball outside in three. Two, <laughs> okay, okay, just give me a second. So, yeah. So we get that. And then we cut back to Donald James Parker done with his run. Now praying that his daughter, Amy, stops hating him and will speak to him. And just then Amy calls. Apparently this two hour movie is in a fucking hurry. Yeah. I love when he's praying. He says, God, touch her life and bring her back to you. Oh, yeah. God, touch her life and bring her back is is Christianese for Jesus. Just fuck her up. Good. Fuck her up good for <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Isn't it, though? Because she calls and she's like, yeah, you know, I'm in dire financial straits and, and that's what it would take for me to speak to you. And he's like, well, great. Jesus did his job, didn't he? Yeah, they have this great moment where he's like, well, I don't recognize your voice. And she's like, well, that's because we haven't talked in 20 years. And he's like, oh, OK, I guess that does make sense. <laughs> yeah. As soon as these actors started dialoguing, my wife sitting next to me immediately asked, do you think that these actors are married in real life? Mm. Oh, that's mm. a good question. <laughs> they are approximately the same age. Yeah. Yeah. With the amount of incest upcoming or implied incest upcoming in the movie, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the case. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Speaking of which, this is where she explains that she has two kids now and he offers to move into her house and pay her rent to help her with her financial trouble. And of course, while he's there, he can <laughs> discipline her 16 year old son. Right. Which like I get that it's Donald James Parker's fantasy of like what someone would say yes to. But if someone has severed their relationship with you and in desperation, they call you because they need money. If your first answer is, why don't I move in with you and discipline your children? I now know why they cut you out of their life. I needed this to be like, I'm going to move in with you and discipline your children. Click credit. Right. Like that. <laughs> Perfect. I'm just going to start an OnlyFans. It's fine. <laughs> fine. She says, well, you know, I'm also behind on some stuff that wouldn't help. He's like, I'll give you four thousand dollars. And I wanted her to say, OK, and then you don't have to fucking come here. That would be even better. <laughs> but he also agrees you know, she's like, oh, I'll be so embarrassed if you have to do that. It'll be embarrassing for me to tell my kids. And he's like, OK, well, how about we pretend that I'm the one in financial trouble and I have to move in with you because of that? <laughs> right. Yeah. At one point, she says, I don't know, Dad. I think you're too perfect to live here. <sighs> and again, because this is a Donald James Parker joint, he goes, yes, that will be hard for me, but I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> And then, not for the last time in the movie, Donald James Parker says to the daughter, I love you. And she's like, thank you for that. <laughs> I wrote in my notes, the Heath and Rice story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's very, it's too close. So I, my grandma called me by accident this week. And so I get on the phone. I was like, hey, grandma, what's going on? She's like, oh, I was just, is it, is it, uh, all right. 
I guess I'll talk to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so we talk, we have lots of good talks. I don't know why she was weird about it, but we talked for a while. And then at the end, I was like, okay, I love you, grandma. And she's like, yep. Click. Ooh, oh, you no. hate the yup. You hate to see it. Woof. And you hate it so much that you accidentally dox yourself on your own show. Don't <laughs> worry. I'll, I'll edit it. So then, so Amy gets off the phone. Scott comes in and that's her 16 year old son and demands to know who she was on the phone with. And by the way, we know Scott is rebellious because his arms are crossed and everything. (laughs) It's so immediate. He comes in already saying gaw. It's just walking. (laughs) Hey, mom, gaw. And she's like, you can't just start with gaw, man. Like that has to be a reaction to something. Okay. Yeah. And this is, of course, where we also meet the sister, Sally. And this is the first of many times where Donald James Parker is going to have to write some like brother and sister shit talk that won't get him dinged by the dove channel (laughs) so it's it's so stupid this actor has to say the lines that fucking donald james parker wrote because that's his job and you watch him be like i'll learn manners when pigs can fly mind your beeswax (laughs) flap doodle what the fuck is flap doodle all right you just picture Donald James Parker chewing people off set like it's a fucking actual sex scene from Nine or something. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to be saying beeswax. Close set yeah. for this one. <laughs> just me and the cameraman and the Lord. <laughs> so, but this is where mom sits down and explains the, the plot to the kids, right? And she also explains this will never come back, but she also explains that they don't have a spare room in the house. So, apparently the the daughter is going to have to sleep in mom's room from now on. And she's surprisingly okay with that. Yeah. Again, this never matters, right? They, they could just say, well, he can stay in the guest room, you know? Yeah. It never matters. It never has anything to do with the movie. I just wrote in my notes, Keith, did you write this part of the movie? <laughs> it feels like he, he thought somebody was going to be like, okay, well then show us that guest room that you have. Do you really have? And like the camera guy was going to have to try to show it and then get caught in the lie. I don't understand. Right, right. Like we were going to be looking at it from the outside and go, there's no way that's a fucking four bedroom. Give me a goddamn break. Yeah. <laughs> that was suspension of disbelief for me. I, I couldn't make it through at that point. <laughs> you, you were into the movie. No, I get, oh, it. Yeah, I get it. That was your Brechtian breakout. I get it. <laughs> so and also so at the end of this, you know, the, Scott is being impudent as he is so want to do. And mom turns to him and says, watch it, Buster. I could put Sally in your room. And I'm like, calm down, Heath. But <laughs> the, the line, she delivers it with all the inflection of give me back my son. It is just so <laughs> over delivered. Yes. This actress always goes from zero to a thousand yes. with Scott, no matter what he says. So throughout the movie, Scott will be like, I don't know, mom. I don't want to go to the party. And she'll be like, Scott, I will stab you in the fucking <laughs> eye. <laughs> I will melt you down like Casey Anthony, okay? I went to high school. I can get away with oh, this Jesus shit. Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> so, okay. So, then we get Donald James Parker showing up at Amy's house to move in. Scott and his punk friends are sitting outside on the porch. And, of course, they're all smoking cigarettes so we can tell that they're bad kids. Oh, absolutely. The hallmarks of Teenage Rebellion in 2014, mohawks and cigarettes. Yes. Not, not, a, not a jewel. <laughs> no vapes. No vapes allowed. The mohawk they put on this poor little Christian nerd <laughs> with his fucking comb over and his mom was like, well, I'm going to go get the hair gel from the Halloween closet. And she just fucking, he had the longest hair, so they made him do it. And he's just, he's just hating it the whole time. <laughs> this is gonna he's be a, a listener now. Film. <laughs> Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah, but of course, Scott and his punk friends, just like everyone who sees him in this movie, will have to comment on how young and spry Donald James Parker is looking. (laughs) Oh, everyone in this movie at one point, including these punks who will be drug smugglers later in the movie. Spoiler alert. Take a moment to be like, well, that guy looks great for his age. Yes. They're like, that can't possibly be your grandpa. He looks far too young to be 65. <laughs> he looks like a super successful Hollywood actor slash director. I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know why I said that, but that's what he looks like to me. I'm 14. To be fair, they are used to 13-year-olds looking like 18-year-olds. So the uh, oh, being fair. able to judge yeah. someone's age in this is might be a little difficult for them. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Right. People age differently in the Rossetti verse. Oh, I have to share this line because this is one that Donald James Parker was very proud of. After he walks by, Scott the Sun says, Gramps, that rhymes with cramps. 
and that's what he's going to do to my style. <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wanted this character to keep going with that and just be like, style, pro- profile, Listen. turn style. Okay, that's enough. I would rather potato peel my skin off than watch that part again. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> This lends us a very important insight, which is that if we challenged Donald James Parker to a rap battle, ah! he would do it. Yes. <laughs> he would he would show up. <laughs> he has pages in notebooks ready for this. Oh, for yeah. Sure. My name is Gramps, and I'm here to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so and then Gramps meets Sally. Now, Sally is a 13-year-old girl played by a 17-year-old girl, and this will be the most uncomfortable relationship in the movie like every time he stepped on set he's like i bet sally's character would hug me now huh lots of touching sally this scene is the is the scene where i notice that every time somebody beefs or shows any affection to each other or is just trying to connect to another person in any way they look each other up and down multiple times somewhat aggressively it's a theme throughout the movie but in this case it's so <laughs> flirtatious i lost my virginity <laughs> it's, weird. it's very weird also Donald James Parker was wearing a different shirt on the outside of the door and on the inside of the oh, door. Oh, was he? Shot. <laughs> yeah. So he's got one of those Under Armour shirts on the outside and then he walks in he's just got a white t-shirt. And the girl, Sally, is like, you look very young, Gramp. Yes. You must work out in that Under Armour shirt that you, that you must have taken off whilst <laughs> entering the door <laughs> magically. And he says to her, while looking her up and down at the age of mentioned 13, and you're a proper young lady. If someone says, and you're a proper young lady near you, and they are not currently doing a stage play of Gone with the Wind, you should tase them. <laughs> yeah. You should tase them. You yep. found a pedophile. Maybe still do it in the Gone with the Wind thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's true, yeah. In Graham's defense, she did look older than he thought because she is already past her prime in Duggar years. So. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's true. The Duggars passed her over. They were like, we're done with this one. This is also another. Uh, th- keep in mind that this has all happened in like two and a half minutes. The friends all remark on how young he looks. The granddaughter's like, wow, you look so much younger than I expected. And then the mom tells him how young he looks. <laughs> all literally within two and a half film minutes. Three compliments in two scenes. It's a DGP all time record. I think so. Yeah. The mom goes, well, you know, you came all the way in from outside. Do you want to take a nap? He's like, no, I'm young. I'm going to go jogging for miles and miles. <laughs> Look at my calves. Look at them. Look at the development on them. <laughs> I wore extra short shorts just so you could see my rippling thighs. Punch me in the calf right now. That's not, <laughs> that's not one of them. Don't. I'll do it. So, so Gramps heads out for a run. And, of course, he has to pass by Scott and Scott's punk friends, so they talk a little trash to each other. Yeah. <laughs> and they're just they're just sitting there in silence for, like, 15 seconds at the beginning of the scene because Gramps shows up a little too late. So what we're watching is a bunch of kids being like, let's, let's sit here and, like, be angry in silence until maybe an old person shows up, and then we'll roast him. And right. then it happens. Yeah. And they roast Gramps. But, yeah, so they, they roast him, he roasts them, and then he challenges them to a four mile relay race it's so good because it has to be the insane thing that donald james parker thinks he could conceivably win at even in his insane fantasy which is like long distance running so he's like well how about a little wager a two mile relay with four laps each halfway markers at the third and fourth lap also everyone needs to use the hoof and scoop he spends 27 (laughs) race the kids down the block asshole you wrote the movie this is supposed to be like we play basketball you know like I play one on one like that's what this is supposed to be this is the closest thing to a sport he can do though is running kind of slowly for a long distance oh this power fantasy absolutely told me that Donald James Parker drives really slow by high schools a few times a week and just picks out every kid he could outrun like, I, like <laughs> that one that one oh definitely that one <laughs> so, okay well one of the ones he picked out is I'll definitely beat that kid in the race is the state champ in a second and it's yeah. ridiculous yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> Donald James Parker by the way if you're listening and let's be honest DJP we know you are we will <laughs> we will race you in a relay race. I know I will lose my portion of it, but I, I'm counting on Noah to take it home for us. <laughs> oh, I, yeah, absolutely. No way. He's um, 
He's 73 now. Yeah, I could take him. Does Noah count as one of the members of the Black Lung Gang, though? <laughs> 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 oh, he's got such good trash talk to all these smokers. And that's the bet, right? If he wins the race, all the kids have to quit smoking. But if they win the race, then he has to buy him a pizza every Friday for two months. God, this is like eight or nine pizzas. It's yeah. such a sad bet. <laughs> It's a deeply sad bet, and I really wanted one of the teenagers to be like, no, you have to suck our dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Every Friday for two, <laughs> two, for months, two yeah. months. You look so young down there. <laughs> <laughs> DJP. I have the breath power of a... <laughs> you suck like a man half your age, yeah. You got a pretty young mouth on you, Grant. Oh, it keeps me young. <laughs> so... All right, so we cut to the track the next day. The punk kids show up. Donald James Parker is already stretching, mostly off camera. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they try to trash talk some more, and mm -hmm. they're already running out. They used, like, the four sentences he could write. So at this point, I was like, it's just going to be like, yeah, 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 for, like, the yep. rest of the movie. Right. It's worse than that, though. Somehow. Right. And this is where Grandpa shows off his crucifix. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> Sally says to him, he's like, What's that cross necklace? Of it? She might as well ask what his shoes are. <laughs> What's that? I've never seen a cross living out here in the Midwest. Yeah. <laughs> Why do you have a T? Are, is it just <laughs> Jesus Christ? I don't know. <laughs> that makes no sense to me. I don't know what you're saying. You're making noises. <laughs> I'd also like to point out that Scott is wearing all black, all heavy black clothing, so you know that his parents are divorced. Right. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good dress to run. Yeah. <laughs> T-shirt that just says God. And really <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then he pulls out the toilet paper tube that they're going to have to use as a baton. I'm like, it's your fucking movie, man. Just have him have a baton. <laughs> oh, and, and of course, here's here's the deepest shit talk he can allow from himself is as he runs off to get ready. He says to the kids that he's going to race. See you girls later. Mm -hmm. Got him. Get Homophobia. It? Yeah. Classic. This was the most accurate bit of a portrayal of a Christian character. I got see you girls later many times when my hair was grown enough to touch my ears as a kid. <laughs> yeah. Fun. <laughs> Tell me yeah. about it. All right. So so the race begins and it's, of course, it's tortoise in the hair. The kids blow themselves out too quickly in the race and he can catch up with them because he's, you know, going slow and steady. OK, but. It's a relay race, so it doesn't matter how tired each kid gets <laughs> right. after their leg. If they beat him in their leg, that's nothing. Yes. Yeah. Yes, which is what we see. Also, if you ever listened to the tortoise of the hare and thought to yourself, this needs four races that all end identically. <laughs> and if it was four hares that kept winning, it would just be the hares win. It's real simple. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but they're getting worried after the first couple of laps here, you know, and, and Scott's strategizing with his buddies. Okay. In fairness, the second kid runs like me with luggage runs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but he doesn't have luggage, but he seems to be miming having lots of bad <laughs> luggage while he's running. The last time I saw a man run like this, Heath was told in a second floor bar that it was last call. <laughs> <laughs> I do parkour sometimes just out of nowhere. It's like, <laughs> a drink, you know, like if your kid's under a car, it's like that. Yeah. yeah. But for drinking, because <laughs> I don't have kids and I like drinking. <laughs> so, but Scott is the the last runner in their relay race and he can't run runnily enough. So Gramps wins. In fact, Scott just collapses at one point, doesn't even finish the race, right? I, he clutches his chest for the rest of the scene, like he a good does. 10 straight minutes. <laughs> I thought he was going to have a heart attack in real life. Like he might have had a small heart attack in real <laughs> life. Directors know, oh, Scott, Scott, you're not clutching your chest. We need to remember that you just <laughs> lost a Gramps. Please put, put your hand back. Yep. <laughs> we also get a super creepy moment with the granddaughter and Gramps where she's like, go Gramps. And he says, you can call me Gramps. I'm kind of starting to like it. No. Yes. No, absolutely not. It gets even creepier. She's, he's like, do you want to take a, a victory lap running hand in hand with me all the way around the track? And she's like, boy, do I? And so they do that. And of course, while they're off running their victory lap, all the punk kids who just lost the race are talking about how they're not going to honor that bet to quit smoking. They're going to keep smoking cigarettes after all. Yeah. It wasn't fair that they lost because that guy is a running machine, a young looking running machine. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't not say it. 
Drew, were you the narrator of the movie? Because <laughs> something like that happened, didn't it? His cum is too virile. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> But Scott decides he's going to honor his bet with Gramps and quit smoking. What's more, he's going to convince his mom to quit smoking as well. And let me say, as a person who has quit smoking in the past, it really is just a matter of throwing a cigarette away and saying, you know what? Yeah. And then never thinking of it again. And <laughs> yes, I wrote in my notes not to attack anyone on this podcast, but movies that show people quitting smoking should show you the absolutely basketball diaries misery that follows for the rest of the movie. Yeah. Yeah. They should show that mom the next morning coming back to the track and getting that three quarters of a cigarette <laughs> off the track because she remembered where she threw it. Drying it out with a lighter. Yeah. Uh-huh. Hitting up Scott, some of Scott's friends so she can get some of that shit <laughs> yeah. they scored in the park. So, I hear you like to get your dick sucked. Um, <laughs> hitting her dad in the knee. All right, we're racing. <laughs> I'll buy you more Mohawk gel if you just get me a damn cigarette. <laughs> But yeah, so oh, we should also point out that part of the bet, too, was that if Gramps lost, he was going to buy everybody lunch. And now he's going to buy him lunch, even though he won and he didn't even have to. Mm. I have never been more sure of anything than that Donald J. Parker thinks a five dollar bill is a great tip at the end of the <laughs> movie. <laughs> All right, young man, you earned this. Oh, and then as though this had not been ridiculous enough, they're all about to leave. And Donald James Parker says, oh, you know what? Before we go, I should probably do my daily pull-ups. Oh, my God. I, my note is literally, we're going to watch Donald James Parker do pull-ups, aren't we? And then we watch Donald James Parker do pull-ups. <laughs> well, hold on. Yeah. A, he never does an actual pull-up, right? He gets eye level with the bar. <laughs> and and B, he says he's going to do 12. He does two in one take. Two in another take, and then we watch the daughter count from five to twelve. <laughs> At this point, I wrote in my notes, welcome to our side of atheism, Drew. Do you miss Kant's categorical <laughs> imperative? <yet?" laughs> okay, they have Gramps do some pull-ups here, whatever. But the moment when he can't grab the bar yes. on the first try is the fucking best. He, he jumps up and his hand slips off and he just awkwardly falls away. I laughed for a while. Why did he keep that? Why keep that? Just get up. Start with you up there. Cold open on you doing a pull up. And we, we would have been confused. Uh, guys, Gramps never quits. Yeah. He no, never that's, quits. Yep. Yeah. That's, that's the moral of the story. Okay. Uh, Even if it takes you two tries to do something, <laughs> never give up. Just like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Crucifix. And so, and then Scott is super jealous because everybody's impressed by how many pull ups Gramps can do. So he tries to do some pull ups, except he does chin ups and he goes all the way up. <laughs> right? Like he can't help but accidentally do something more impressive than what Donald James Parker does. At this point, I expected Sally to start doing jumping jacks and being like, I'm doing pull ups too. <laughs> <laughs> I find it interesting that the mom loves Scott but hates Gramps. But she takes a photo of every single fucking yes. pull up that Gramps does. And then when Scott's up there, she like won't even look in his direction. Nope. <laughs> so, OK, but so now Scott is determined to whip Gramps's ass at running. OK, yeah. To be clear, that's the stakes of the movie right now is him announcing I'm going to beat a 65 year old man at running. I'm in high school. Yes. That's the movie. Yep. Full school shooter look on his face <laughs> yes. while he's declaring his intention. <laughs> So, OK, so then we cut to Scott running around the track, you know, in pursuit of that goal. But there's some girl there who's Captain america her Falcon, right? She's <laughs> on your lefting him. Uh, and we're getting like the training montage music here. But it's like if Rocky had to beat up Burgess Meredith. Is, is like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's what's been set up. So the music is just kind of sarcastic and silly yeah. at this point. <laughs> And failed because Burgess Meredith's cum was so thick and frothy. <laughs> yeah, right, right. But yeah, but Scott falls in love with this girl that's running even faster than him. And it turns out that her dad is the track coach. This is this is Chelsea, by the way. Okay. Yeah. And dad, by the way, for those who listen to the podcast, the last time we saw this actor, he was in the Chip Rossetti film The Right to Believe about the guy who doesn't want to make T-shirts for a pride parade. Mm hmm. So he's back yeah. with a goatee for this film. Oh, yeah, I yeah. Was, no, the whole I was very excited. Rossetti versus coming together. Yeah. And now the Supreme Court agrees with him about everything yeah. in the United States. Mm. That's fun. We're supposed to be a happy show. He, 
<laughs> they might die. So yeah, so we also learned that that Chelsea and her dad are very Christian. Oh, we we should point out too that when Scott decided he wanted to run, Gramps gave him his running shoes. And because they had been on his feet, now everyone who sees Scott has to compliment his shoes. <laughs> yes. yeah. I wrote in my notes, I can't help but notice you have the shoes of a sexually advanced genius. <laughs> 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 All right, so we cut back home where we see Scott. Now, Scott has to do the whole, like, he's not in shape now, but he will be later. So he's trying to do sit-ups poorly, but what he's actually doing is slow motion sit-ups, which are way the fuck harder than just sit-ups. Yeah, and he's decided to touch his elbows around his head like he's duck and covering under a 1950s desk. <laughs> yes. And he asks at this point, he's like, hey, where are Gramps and Sally? And, and mom's like, oh, they, they went to church. They went to Saturday night church. There's Saturday night church. Is that real? There's every night church. Oh, yes, there's church. Saturday night church. There's Fuck. everyday church if you're, a, if you're a Baptist, trust me. Oh, oh, no. I literally wrote in my notes, I'm going to defer to our resident expert, Drew, as to whether or not there is Saturday night church. Oh, there's Saturday morning, afternoon, and night church if you look hard enough. There's oh. Wednesday night church. There's Tuesday night <sighs> church. I live, like, in between two Baptist churches in Georgia. Because you, you, everywhere in Georgia, you're in between two Baptist churches at least. So, yeah. Traffic sucks on those days. <laughs> but this is where Scott's like, well, I'm not going to go to any stupid church. And mom starts to realize that she really should have churched him up when he was younger. Yeah. So she announces that she'll starve him if he doesn't go to church. Yes. He will go to church or she will deprive him of food until he dies. I mean, as the resident expert, that's <laughs> not inaccurate. <laughs> yeah, fair. Fair. Yeah, his response is, this is blackmail. And I wrote in my notes, uh, it's actually, I'm sorry, I'm on your team, but that's actually not blackmail. Blackmail is pretty much the only thing it's not. <laughs> yeah, no, it's blackmail would be a huge improvement from where you're at right now. Yeah. I mean, it's an ultimatum. It, it really seems like she gets the Christianity thing well. No, that's yeah. true. That's fair. <laughs> her dad taught her well. <laughs> but, you know, Scott's like, well, I'll be damned if I'm going to have a character arc. So he lays down in the floor to harumph. It's the best. <laughs> he was the the very obvious screen direction was Scott lies down powdery. Yes. And and bless his little heart, the actor did exactly that. He just goes to sleep. Go, 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 go. <laughs> <laughs> so that evening, Scott decides that he would rather go to church than literally starve to death. So he comes to dinner all harumphy. Oh, no, sorry. This is the next morning, right? This is breakfast because yeah. mom's just like, you're not going to wear that to church, are you? And Donald James Parker's like, actually, in modern day churches, you could just come as you are. And like, yeah, it, you have to wear clean clothes, though. Scott has been wearing the same set of right. clothes since he went running. <laughs> oh, yeah. He ran in those clothes. You're right. He did. Lots of come on this black shirt. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> also, Donald James Parker says this is a. I wrote down this quote because it's fucking insane. He says. Lots of people be wearing blue jeans. Lots of people be wearing blue jeans. That That's a hate crime. His rap career would just soar. Yes. Yes. Amen. Just so many takes with slur words before he eventually got that. <laughs> Listen up, my homie jeans. No, nope, cut, nope. cut. Donald. So we, we go to church. And it turns out that Chelsea goes to that very same church. And, she, you know, she's pretty impressed with how present at that church Scott is. Oh, this is one of my favorite movie tropes, right? Because they can't ever be like, Christian girls think you're hot. Christian girls think you're cool. So it's always just like, oh, I noticed you're in a building that I'm in. Yeah. Sploosh. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, so but luckily we don't have to sit through church with him. We cut to some time later when Scott's hanging out with all his, you know, punk bros telling him about this hottie that he met at church. Yeah, and they make fun of him. They're like, you went to fucking church? Boo. So we're, we're the setting here, we're in a typical, a very atheist town in rural Tennessee, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, I assume this is what Drew did as a kid, right? Which is how he became the fat ass rebel he is. You just smoked with a uh, with a mohawk and explained to people that you know going to church would make Satan mad. Oh yeah, absolutely. No, that he, to a T. <laughs> just against the wall with one knee up for sure. Yeah, 
Yeah, and the friends turn to, to Scott. And so we should point out that there's two friends that are like the punk friends, and then there's Scott, and then there's one friend who's sort of on the fence about whether to be a punk or, or a churchgoer. But the two punk friends are like, hey, so you guys want to go down to the park and smoke cigarettes and do drugs? That's literally what they're saying here. I <laughs> would give any amount of money for Donald James Parker to explain to me how he thinks drug sales work. <laughs> He's like, well, you, you know that ice cream van, right? Well, there's another van it's all painted green. <laughs> I just wish that there was a scene where he accompanies them to the park and just fucks up the drug dealer in a race. <laughs> oh, nice. nice. The crack dealer just shoots him in the chest. Oh, this is supposed to be for act three it's for a relay. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, but the punk kids leave Scott and TJ. That's the, the friend on the fence. They don't want to go to the park and do drugs and smoke cigarettes. So the other friends leave and Scott and TJ have this talk about like, gee, I wonder if Gramps has already fundamentally changed my outlook on life or if we'll need more acts for that. Mm. <laughs> we do both find him sexually attractive for sure. <laughs> he looks so young. In my notes, I put Scott has his first moral thought ever. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. It's like he's like, it's like this voice in my head telling me what's right and wrong. Are you just now noticing that? At 16? There's like, Gramps brought along some kind of spirit, some kind of spirit trying to influence me to be holy. <laughs> <laughs> all right, well, I'll tell you what, quick before all the characters start talking about how big Gramps' penis is, we're going to pause for a quick break, but we'll be back far sooner than I'd like with even more in Gramps' Shoes. I try to focus my videos on the arguments, not the person. Arguments, not the, well, I guess that's that's one way of doing it, yeah. My mug. Drew Lon Rouge, what are you doing? Still not my full name. I mean, I was drinking coffee. Okay, but from old coffee beans in this house? Absolutely not. Do you know what they're talking about? Yeah, they're, they're going to tell you about trade coffee. What's trade coffee? Come on, seriously? Romeo and Drulia. Wow. Trade coffee connects customers to the freshest and best tasting coffee they've ever made at home by partnering with the country's best craft roasters. These are independent businesses from big cities and small towns. Trade customers are truly impactful for these independent roasters, often being the largest source of new growth for them. And Trade Coffee's team actually taste tests thousands of coffees to keep 450 different kinds live and ready to ship every day. There's no one perfect coffee, but there is a perfect coffee for you. And Trade's human-powered algorithm is going to find it. In fact, Trade is so confident they'll match you right the first time that if they don't, they'll take your feedback and an actual coffee expert will work with you to send you a brand new bag for free. It's true. Trade sent us a three-month trial when they became a sponsor, and we both stayed on as customers. Right now, Trade is offering new subscribers a total of $30 off your first order plus free shipping when you go to drinktrade.com slash awful. That's more than 40 cups of coffee for free. Get started by taking their quiz at drinktrade.com slash awful and let Trade find you a coffee that you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash awful for $30 off. And don't forget about Father's Day coming up. A Trade subscription is the perfect gift for the coffee lovers in your life. All right, well, I'm sold. So... Are you guys actually going to make some new coffee and fix my mug or? Mm, I think the lesson we gave you is far more valuable, don't you? Uh, no, not really. Drew killed Roger Rabbit. You hold your tongue. Still not my name. Okay, here we go. Your toughest challenge yet. You got to write the words of a challenged young man lashing out in anger. Oh, boy. Here we go. Uh, uh, hey, Gramps, you don't know. Oh, gosh, here it comes. You don't know hack about me. Oh, goodness, I don't know. What, 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 what are you doing, Donald? Are you writing Raging Bull 2? This is too far. This is too far. This is your sale. No, no. I, I have to stay strong. I have to write the real and gritty truth of teenage rebellion. Mm, okay, here we go. My dozens of viewers are counting on me. Uh, hey, Donald, you finished writing that movie so I can shoot it yet? Chip, darn it. I told you I'd ring the bell when it's ready. Fine, fine, fine. I'll wait downstairs. And bring me more Fig Newtons. Yeah, okay. You got it. Mm, Fig Newtons, my great and terrible weakness. Sorry, did you just say that Fig Newtons are I said wait downstairs. Okay, okay, I'm going. I'm going. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. And if you were worried that we were going to get all the way through this movie without talking about how satanic Harry Potter is, never you fear, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> yeah. and otherwise... Because we're going to rejoin the family trying to figure out what movie they want to watch that evening. Okay. 
I'm sorry. I know we have to spend the next six or seven hours talking about this conversation, <laughs> but can we first address the fact that Donald James Parker shorts are <laughs> just above his perennium? Yeah, yeah. This is, we're, we're talking about panties. He's in, in his panties, yeah. So Sarah, Sally's like, I'm bored. I want to watch a movie. Would you guys like to go to a video store, which I apparently think still existed as a viable <laughs> thing in 2014? That's the year Blockbuster went out of business. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. They they go to family video. Let's oh, face it. Yeah. Big, yeah. big choice. They go to big <laughs> choice video. Yeah, it's the Christian one. Donald James Parker just spends the entire time standing in front of the curtain to the porn. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Not today. Sam. Does your mother know that? You- yeah. So, <laughs> but Sally wants to watch Harry Potter. And so we get to listen to Gramps opine on the satanic nature of Harry Potter films for a bit. Oh, but first he, oh my God. Gramps is like, do you really want to hear my opinion on Harry Potter? Scott's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> Scott speaks for the people. Like he represents <laughs> me. He's the best sometimes. <laughs> Again, just to be clear, Donald James Parker hasn't just written his lecture about Harry Potter into the movie. He's written a bunch of people saying, no, please, Donald James Parker, give us your opinion on Harry yep. Potter. Yes. <laughs> Except for Scott, who has a fucking blender that he keeps turning on every time <laughs> Donald James Parker tries to talk. It's the best. Oh, yeah. So he explains to us how Harry Potter is the cheese in Satan's mousetrap for us. <sighs> yeah. I love how he says that. And then Donald James Parker was like, obviously, that literary device was way too advanced for you. Okay, so you know mice, right? You know mouse traps. I've lost you again. Okay, you know Mammalia mouserumius, right? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and of course, again, written into his own movie, he says, you know, a lot of people think I'm batshit fucking crazy when I equate Harry Potter to Satanism even fellow Christians. I'm like, yeah, a lot of people claim water is wet too, Donnie. It's just that's... And his counter-argument to that is, well, you know, people say Harry Potter's not a real witch, so it's not a problem. But when I read things as a kid, I wanted to be those heroes. And I wrote in my notes, so does he think Paul Bunyan is a danger for children becoming a giant? Right. <laughs> Right. And also, by the way, like he lists the good old days of all the heroes he had. They're all slave owners. I mean, I don't know if Kit Carson was a slave. He was probably a slave owner. But- he cannot not name a racist when he's naming right. his favorite hero. Well, there was Davy Crockett and Andrew Jackson and that guy who went viral for yelling at those Mexican girls at a fresh and go. <laughs> That lady who reported that guy at Central Park. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking this up. Henry Ford. No. Okay. Okay. He says there are thousands of other ancient stories about the forces of good and evil when he's explaining, you know, how this is the is the cheese in Satan's mousetrap. Mm-hmm. And I'm just sitting there thinking, okay, so there are thousands of other stories just like yours. Which proves that yours is the only one that's real? Right. Why would you point that out? It's your movie, Gramps. <laughs> also, I got to throw out this quote here, too. He goes, when I was a kid, kids wanted to grow up to be policemen, cowboys, and nurses, heroes. To date, that, so, you know, a lot of issues with that list. But then he goes on <laughs> to say, today's kids want to grow up to be witches and warlocks and vampires. <laughs> Oh, my. <laughs> yeah, he says, oh, my there. He does. <laughs> so, now I'm just picturing a booth at career day with a vampire sitting behind it. Okay. So the benefits <laughs> are pretty good. Uh, you know, he was he was off camera when he said, oh, my, at the end of that. The reason why is because he high-fived himself while right, saying Right, yeah. It. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so, okay, so with that satanic panic tirade wrapped up, him and Sally go to rent a movie. We will discover, by the way, that this movie rental place is apparently in their fucking garage based on how quickly they come back. <laughs> <laughs> right i assume there's a shelf on the wall that they like fi- they have a red box out in front of oh their there house. you go yeah that makes sense i i love too. as soon as they leave they're barely even out of frame and scott starts me 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 and gramps right oh it's so good me 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 me, me. here <laughs> and of course he turns to his mom at this point and, and he says Oh, he's the fucking worst. I really hate everything about him. Oh, by the way, mom, why didn't you talk to him for the last 20 years? <laughs> and she's like, it's a, 
It's because he's the fucking worst. Yeah. Well, <laughs> Scott, I, I wanted to be a warlock and he just didn't <laughs> approve. Vampire and he didn't approve. <laughs> I get a very, very appealing scholarship from Vampire University. And, uh, you know, <laughs> he didn't appeal. Yeah, but she explains that he wouldn't let her listen to her satanic music. And he wanted her to marry a good Christian boy that wouldn't abuse her and leave her in Act One. <laughs> right. So, again, just to be clear, this is the your angry, abusive Christian dad was right. The movie. Yep. Yeah, well, and then this is, of course, where she shamefully admits that before she got married to Scott's father, the two of them <gasps> lived in sin. Do you think they had to tape Donald down to something in a different room <laughs> so that he didn't run in and scream horror at her? That's, yeah, there's a reason he had to be off screen for this admission, yeah. <laughs> no, they just, they just dropped him out of high school and he just got caught up racing all the teenagers. <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I love that the implication is that this guy was, you know, he was all right, but it really went downhill when they had premarital sex. And that's when he got violent. That was the origin <laughs> yep. of his abusive behavior, like all abusive men. is they, 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 they got it in too early. Yep. The important thing to remember is, is that it's her fault. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The full expression, not a lot of people know it, is if you give the cow milk for free, it'll beat the shit out of you. So, yeah. <laughs> So, and of course, Scott's like, also, by the way, isn't Grandpa supposed to be so poor he had to move in with us? But he just seems to be rolling into, and then, of course, Gramps and Sally come back so that they don't have to reveal that aspect of the plot just yet. Gramps is flush with cash, with the shoes, the pizza, the lunch, the video store run. My God. <laughs> the guy's probably a rich computer programmer. <laughs> This man is a thousand air, folks. Yeah. Back up. <laughs> and he has picked out for the movie Chariots of Fire. Oh, nothing going to get those kids excited like a movie from 1981. <laughs> That's for sure. That's mostly slow motion shots of other men's thighs. Yes. <laughs> Donald, 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 buddy, you, you're a homosexual. <laughs> it's fine. You, you could just be that. And so you, you be that. It's I like that movie. It's good. There's lots of thighs to jerk off to. <laughs> It's 2014, so I'm I'm guessing that Family Video probably had the selection of Chariots of Fire and Frozen. Of course, you wouldn't watch Frozen, though. Yeah, you, you well, right. that. too yeah. satanic. <laughs> well, and Ghostbusters too, but also too, way too satanic. Even more witchcraft. <laughs> but and this is also that we have this bizarre fucking moment where Scott's like, "Hey, Gramps, you seem to be throwing around a lot of money. You want to buy me a tattoo?" And then Gramps has to give us his screed against tattoos as well. Tattoo? Whoa. I might as well be a warlock. <laughs> <laughs> a tattoo is permanent. And I was like, yeah, don't do something serious like get a tattoo. Commit your eternal soul to Christ instead. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, marry the first person that you fuck. Yeah. This is also, of course, where Gramps offers to teach Scott how to drive. Mm -hmm. Right. He's 16, but they can't afford the insurance on him. So he hasn't gotten his driver's license. Uh, Gramps can help him with that. And then, OK, so then we cut to Chelsea and her dad at the track. There's this great moment where they're trying to vamp before Scott shows up. <laughs> right. Where she's like, yeah, no, maybe I can improve here a little bit. And she points to a spot on his clipboard. Like, what could she be pointing at? That's <laughs> He's the part little... of the track. <laughs> this turn right here. And and they try to say stuff more. She's yes. like, my time running distance is time and distance. On, there's We have columns. Thank Divide God Scott's here. Oh, my God. Because <laughs> <laughs> his opening line is, so your time on both of these was absolutely perfect. Yes. Which would mean it was zero seconds. Right, yes. Because otherwise there is. <laughs> so you're teleporting now. I think we're done. <laughs> She is a good Christian character. She can improve on perfection. It's doable. You just got, you guys don't know. <laughs> yeah. Also, what the fuck does he have on that clipboard full of paper? Right. What would that be? Yeah. He turns it to the camera. It's just the word run written in <laughs> yeah. the letters. I know that this is 2014, but there, there's a strange lack of electronic devices. There, there are yes. no smartphones. There, there, no one even has a fucking BlackBerry in this. I mean, nope. are you really still using clipboards when your phone has a timer on it? I mean, <laughs> my God. Counterpoint, I don't think anyone could stay Donald James Parker's friends if they have access to anything outside of the small town where he makes his movie. Mm. Fair. 
bear. But of course, Scott ultimately shows up and it turns out that coach has made Scott a workout schedule for him to be a better runner. And Sally and Gramps are also there because they want to run around the track because <laughs> Donald James Parker insisted on being in all of the scenes. Yeah. And there's also this weird moment where Chelsea explains to Scott that the most important part of running is suffering. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like Jesus. Yeah. Which uh, Gramps <laughs> talked about. Yeah. Cross country. It, th the key is ignoring very important signals from your body that you should stop doing the thing you're doing. Yes. <laughs> right. This movie is not Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, but this is also where we learned that there's a 5K downtown next month. And I, I, I assumed at the time that that was going to be the all valley tournament where he would finally beat Gramps <laughs> once and for all. But no, it's, it's actually going to happen in act two. No, this movie has like seven races and none of them matter. <laughs> right. And also, I have to point out this great moment at the end of the scene because they invite Scott to go running with them. And later on, at the beginning of the next scene, he will have gone running with them. But Scott misunderstood or something. So at the end of this scene, they're like, yeah, let's go running. And Scott's like, all right, I'll see you guys later. And he turns and he walks the other way. <laughs> so good. Okay, I was just checking the grass over here. I'm, I'm back. Let's do the thing that we just moments ago said that we're going to do. That I'm doing. This all makes sense. I have something I want to rewind back a, a little bit to the to earlier in the scene. There's a point where Sally is talking about wanting to be in the Olympics, wanting to get into running. Mm -hmm. And Chelsea says, oh, I can help her reach her dream. And I'm thinking this poor girl has been exposed to multi-level marketing rhetoric already <laughs> <laughs> at such a young age. Sally, what if I told you you could start your very own business from the comfort of your home? Yeah, I can't afford not to. Yeah, so that actually comes from the next scene, right? Because they get done with their running, and this is where Gramps and Sally and, and Chelsea and Chelsea's dad all meet, right? Yeah. This is where Scott goes like, wow, I can't believe I just ran four miles. And I'm like, well, I can't believe you never broke a sweat while doing it. I can't believe you did it in a turtleneck, the same <laughs> turtleneck you've been wearing throughout this entire fucking movie. I love this failed attack. Again, this is him writing the goddamn script, this failed attempt for him to use an analogy to help Sally realize that she too could be a great runner. He goes, well, hey, Sally, how do you eat an elephant? And Sally goes, and I love you too, Sally. I don't eat elephants. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't try to do an analogy. I can tell that's what you're doing. It's going to be dumb. No. Right. And then Chelsea's like, no, you eat it one bite at a time. And she's like, that, that's not an answer to my question. He's like, no, because... You have to run one bite at a time. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Chelsea's dad is nodding like some prime wisdom is about to be delivered. And I'm so happy to have a front row seat to this. <laughs> <laughs> yes. They're talking about the philosophy of I was so just it's so boring. Running is so boring. And now they're talking about the philosophy surrounding it. Yes. God, they made a movie about it. Really wanted a, a local Sudanese kid to just burn the shit out of all of them. Fuck, Sally, never mind. <laughs> never mind, that guy's just better at it than us. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So now DJP is going to teach Scott how to drive. And this is, I believe this entire plot line exists just so that Donald James Parker would have a moment to bitch about how kids drive these days with their cell phones and their excessive lane changes. <laughs> Yeah, I, I found it a little bit hard to concentrate on his driving lesson while he was wearing the uh, Cleveland hate crime mascot. Yeah. Oh, that? <laughs> oh, that didn't age well, and he was hoping it wouldn't, I think. Yeah. But Graham starts off with this big, long lecture about how important it is to not talk on your cell phone and, and not text while you're driving. I'm like, yep, yep. And he's like, and then and don't even talk to the other people in the car. And I'm like, fucking what? <laughs> I honestly, look. I don't love a lot about this movie, but if the rest of this movie was just Donald driving in total and complete silence next to his grandson. And shushing him every time he tried to yeah. suck. <laughs> Two more hours to Cleveland. Is Jesus an exception? Can you talk to Jesus? Oh, Whoa. well, if you need him to take the wheel, you kind of have Great to. Great question. Right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and then after this giant monologue about like, don't get distracted, he puts in a CD and starts listening to Christian music. Yes. Yes, that Scott will later point out that he fucking hated. Yeah. But yeah, so they, 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 we watch him drive in a circle around a parking lot. I'm like, well, four left turns. He's ready for NASCAR, I guess. He's not, <laughs> can't do much else. 
It's so long watching a car drive super slow in a circle. And this is building to more running. Yeah. yeah. That's what's going to happen. This is an interlude. I mean, by contrast, the running is very exciting. <laughs> that, well, that's it. Yeah, he had to, he had to calm fair, things yeah. down a little bit from all of those exciting thighs that we were seeing. Also, didn't he say driving is the most complicated thing people do? Yeah, at least some more than others, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely the most complicated thing Donald James Parker does. It's even more complicated than running, yeah. He says that, and then they drive in a slow circle. It's amazing. <laughs> so, And then, so now we have to drill down on that one time that Donald James Parker read a book. He read a book, a whole fucking book, and he was very proud of it. So he worked that into the movie. It's time for him to recommend Dandelion Wine. Okay. It's not even a book. It's a collection of essays. Oh, is it yep. really? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I, I could have sworn that was a book. I mean, the, the Christians call the Bible a book, and it's kind of a collection. Of that, that's true. That's <laughs> fair. That's fair. Short stories. You ever think to yourself when you were like a kid and you were in English class and they'd like make you read some fucking obscure nothing essay or excerpt from a novel and you'd just be like, I know about books. Why don't we ever, ever study the books that people are reading? That's because people like Donald James Parker are reading the excerpts from English textbooks. Yeah. That's all they <laughs> ever want to read their whole life. Yeah. But it's so Scott's like, I'm going to go get a job today and Gramps is like well before you do read this excerpt from apparently a short story <laughs> that I have printed out in advance and, and, and not printed out like on a computer like gone to a copy machine yeah right and copied over a paperback version of they actually have a copy machine at Blockbuster it's, uh, it's <laughs> He absolutely photocopied an English textbook. If you look at the text, you could see the like read and review questions along the side <laughs> of the fucking page. Did you know page. off yeah. the corners and shit? <laughs> After driving around the parking lot a few times, he had Scott take him to to Office Max and just yeah, so it's he a could big video and yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so then we get this incredibly useless, again, we'll never hear, like, this is, we're almost entirely done with this plotline, but Scott is going to go to the grocery store now to apply for a job and apparently get an interview that very same day. And I don't have much to say on this scene, except that the the boss that's about to hire him asks about his religion, make sure he's sufficiently Christian. Yep. Before, as a condition of hiring him, are you thinking about becoming pregnant? No, no, no. <laughs> you can't ask any of this. She also says that the last guy she hired stopped looking for work after she hired him. And I wrote in my notes, I mean, yeah, it's because you gave him a job. That's how that works. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but that's why the job is available. The last guy was a liar and he was lazy. And, and, and she says, are you a liar and lazy? And he's like, nope, I go to church. And she's like, oh, hired then. I love that Scott is instantly able to just ace the acting like a Christian during an interview in a small town. Yeah. <laughs> shtick, even though he's apparently only gone to church once and that was really more for the bitches than anything. Right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Well, for the food. <laughs> this is a job at a grocery store and they acted like, oh, you're going to have to be genius at this. Like, they're going to ask you how many windows in New York City in order to <laughs> stock shelves. If we shrink you down to the size of a nickel and throw you in a blender. Yeah, I just I, my favorite moment in this entire interview is when she goes, you know, there are literally hundreds of young men that want this job. I'm like, no, the fuck they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted him to walk out and there's just like a mob of young men waiting. <laughs> Sorry, guys, I got it. Minor! <laughs> so, yeah, so he goes home to tell mom the good news. And now, of course, he really wants to read Dandelion Wine because he was so inspired by that excerpt that he got. Yeah, they have to do this very old man screed about how $8 an hour is plenty. Yep. Right. She's like, well, Scott, you can't drive. You would need to pay for insurance. And he's like, don't worry. I'm being paid the very generous amount of eight dollars an hour, <laughs> <laughs> which is actually above minimum wage now. Yeah, so. right. Yeah, exactly. This was made in 2014 for fuck's sake. And then, of course, Sally comes through and she's like, I've learned to love reading because of Ray Bradbury's dandelion wine. Now <laughs> we're off to the library to go get Anne of Green Gables. Oh, my God. Donald James Parker's list of books for young women <laughs> is second only to his list of racist heroes. It has <laughs> Nancy Drew. He brings up Nancy Drew mystery. He says 
out loud, we're going to read all the canon, the whole canon, you know, Anna Green Gables, the secret garden, Nancy Drew. What the <laughs> fuck is happening? <laughs> Phyllis Schlafly's autobiography. <laughs> <laughs> also, by the way, you shouldn't bring up a Ray Bradbury thing when you're definitely somebody who has done a book burning before in your yeah, life recently. Right. <laughs> <laughs> also, I have to point this out. Throughout this entire scene, whenever they pan back to the four shot, the camera is like three degrees off kilter and it almost made me throw up. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Gramson and Sally wander off to go get more books or whatever, more of those classic books. I love that the mom is saying that she's been trying to get Sally to, to start reading, especially these books for so long. I wrote in my notes, Gramps can easily get her to read these books because he has a PP and that's how God planned it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. And then, of course, Scott gets all upset because they're paying more attention to Gramps than him and he gauzes his way out the door once more. He is in a rabid, frothing rage that someone spent two sentences talking about something that isn't him. Yep. So then we cut to Scott's bad friends trying to convince him to engage in a criminal enterprise with them. Donald James Parker, how drug dealing works. It's the best. <laughs> they're like, hey, man, we're going to be uh, drug mules later. Do you want to join us? And he's like, I don't know about weed. And they're like, oh, no, no, no. We're trafficking crack cocaine at a park <laughs> in the middle of Tennessee. Right. Where are you trafficking? Do you guys don't even have a car. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> I heard that we can get the good shit that Greg Locke is snorting. Let's do it. <laughs> right. They're, they're muling the crack from like the park to the grocery store parking lot. Like, right. Yeah, exactly. Happening? Well, I mean, there's a serious demand with the hundreds of young men out in the parking yeah. lot. So. <laughs> <laughs> they're just sitting there shitting out balloons. Guys, that was like a six minute drive. I don't think we didn't even go through it. A... <laughs> checkpoint at a certain point you just like swallowing condoms yeah <laughs> so i know they're going for the message that oh it's bad because you you know kids become drug dealers like this i literally quit working at a grocery store to be a drug dealer in my life and it went fucking great well because they were paying you eight dollars a fucking Best hour yeah. the they were paying me less than that store. well yeah they were right. paying me noticeably was, less than it that. was 425 when i was working at a grocery store so yeah so that night he sneaks out to go drug mealing and this is where we meet Drew's best worst, right? The cicadas. Oh, <laughs> incredible. They absolutely drown the dialogue for this entire fucking scene. It's so amazing. I feel like Scott hired these cicadas to be him <laughs> for the scene. I don't know how any of you have fucking notes on this scene. My entire note for this scene is just like, I don't know, man. Crickets. Yep. <laughs> Can't hear the movie. I had to turn it up just full blast to be able to hear the dialogue. And by the end, I was completely deaf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, I had the subtitles on. So, Smart. And luckily, the, su the subtitles didn't just say cicada noises. I was going to say, <laughs> the subtitle guy had to be like, also crickets constantly. <laughs> so, yeah. So he goes to sneak out, but Gramps catches him and confronts him because he overheard their conversation about drug muling from before. Right. And Gramps is like, you know, I, I know what you're out to do. I should take you to a prison so you could be scared straight or something. And Scott's mm. like, actually, those programs don't actually, they, they don't help. Those don't just, work. Actually, in fact, they're they're worse for the kids. Yeah, it is. Um, it's just statistically lead to recidivism Technically, a statistically. Rate. Wait, you lost me. What'd you say? Uh, you right, yeah. <laughs> he also explains that if he's not careful, he'll end up a slave, just like he learned about in school. What? Oh, my God. I, I love this part. He's he's like, you ever learn about slavery in school? Scott's like, no, this is Tennessee. We don't learn about that CRT bullshit. <laughs> it's actually illegal. I was I, 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 my notes are all like, where the fuck you going with this, Gramps? Where the fuck you going, man? Yeah, yeah. I wanted Scott to be like, oh, uh, slavery. Yeah, let's let's talk about slavery. Um, let's qu really quick. Grab your Bible. I want to I want to <laughs> uh, what that says about slavery. That's a, that's a good point. Well, apparently Scott has not been taught about slavery in school because he explains that being a teenager is just like being a slave. Yes. As soon as Gramps brings up, do you want to be a slave? I thought that it was going to go in a completely different direction. I thought it was going to end up with, well, you can be a slave for Christ. Oh, interesting. Uh, well, yeah, I don't think <laughs> anyone could have possibly predicted where it actually was going. Listeners, you don't know yet. You think you do, but you don't. Yes, he's going to say you'd be a slave to the drugs. But what he says is 
God made us master of the plants, but when you do drugs, you become a slave of plants. What the fuck was happening here? <laughs> okay. Drug addiction is not bad. He's like, yeah, because cocaine. of the, how it harms you. Drug addiction is bad because then plants have have dominion over you, and that's just unnatural. <laughs> right. <laughs> He seems to think he names all the drugs. He's like, yeah, cocaine comes from the coca plant and the yeah. marijuana. That's what he seems to think the problem with drugs is that they're plant based. Right. God yep. made Adam and Eve, not Adam and leaves. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> that's why I do 12 sheets of acid before I run. It's <laughs> <synthetic>. <laughs> Scott just takes out some toad venom and starts smoking it. And he's like, oh, that's actually yeah, that's animal based. Okay, oh, fine. Right. <laughs> I told you that running is a natural. It, it It's a natural high. It helps me get close to God. That in the LSD, you know. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> Scott, have you ever seen the documentary The Happening? <laughs> it's just like that. <laughs> So, but he explains you you can't start smuggling drugs. You have too many good things going on in your life. He's like, like what? And he's like, uh, running, uh, bagging groceries for eight dollars an hour. Um, I bet that girl Chelsea would fuck you. <laughs> oh, okay. He, he he says that, but he writes in himself the line of not remembering the female character's name. Though. Yes. Uh huh. He's like, what about that girl? Uh, what's her name? Uh, Shelbert. Okay. <laughs> cello? No, it's not cello. It's Chelsea. <laughs> yeah, how biblical of him. In his defense, he's pretty engrossed with Sally. All other women have just fallen by the wayside. Yeah, that's point. true. <laughs> yeah, they're all Sally to him now. Oh, Jesus. And and Scott is like, well, I'm too much of a loser for a hot chick like Chelsea. And he's like, the only real losers are the people who aren't my religion. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Don't be a fucking loser and go to hell, Scott. Yes. Ah, oh, so, okay. So, but Scott's talked out of drug muling for the evening. So he goes back inside and this is where I realized that the front door of this house has been open the entire time. <laughs> yeah. 1,500 cicadas are now crawling yes. around on the, on the coffee table. Yeah. <laughs> My dead father showed up in this scene to yell at everybody. Yeah, right. <laughs> Air conditioning in the whole neighborhood. And so the next day, oh, this is so good. The next day, Scott sees TJ and he tells him that Troy and Adam, the punk friends, got busted for drug muling last night. Now they're going to be in prison forever. <laughs> if it hadn't been for grabs, he, he also would have been busted. So. Yeah. When, when he says, if it hadn't been for grabs, and Scott's like, gah, does anyone talk about anything except grabs? And TJ's like, I mean, no, he, he wrote the script. He wrote the movie. So. <laughs> <laughs> This reminds me of the gag in the office where they're talking about blogging and Creed at one point says, yeah, everyone, when I, when I get online, everyone's talking about Betty White. I, I follow this guy because he's not talking about Betty White. Everyone else is. <laughs> that That's the vibe I got. <laughs> so, yeah, but so TJ, though, is now inspired to go find a job and go to church, too, because he saw how awesome things were going for Scott. We will never see TJ again. We're done with that character. No, he walks off into the distance. And also, it's now time for the big race for the big 5K. Which, to be clear, we should point out, it's not the finale of the movie. Not it's, at all. It's one of two big races. <laughs> yeah. It happened, what, what, we're like an hour or something into the movie? And I was like, fuck, it's going to be like another hour of this race. You, yeah, <laughs> right. Are we watching the whole race? In real time? Oh, by this time in the movie, I had very few conscious thoughts. I, I was sloshed. I was crossfaded by, by this time. So I was really enjoying myself. <laughs> Just watching Drew do lines off the DVD case in Cramps' <laughs> shoes. Just becoming a slave to some plants while I watch. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, but so Scott explains that it wouldn't even count if he beat Gramps at this race because Gramps is going to be running with Sally. So he's not going to be trying his best. And Chelsea's like, well, you're not good enough to keep up with me, so I don't know who the fuck you're going to run with then. <laughs> and this is where we meet the reigning state champ and Scott's competition. <laughs> yes, Duke. Duke Snyder, though. There's That's a famous baseball player from the Brooklyn Dodgers that Donald James Parker clearly knows. There's so many names. Have him be Duke anything. And he was just like, Duke, I'm trapped in Snyder. And he kept it. Mm. That's all. Yep. And look. Far be it from me to body shame anybody. But dude comes over and he's like, yeah, I'm the reigning state track champion. And I'm like, with those tits, Duke? No. <laughs> no. Nope. Nobody. No, and that's the thing. Look, this this gets in relatively good. If you wanted to make him like, 
you know, a good swimmer, maybe you could get away. If you wanted to make him a good football player, you could definitely get away with that. There's no fucking way this kid is a runner. <laughs> so He's run and run and run, but he's never escaped those man titties. <laughs> no. So, some things you can't run away from. True story. But yeah, so he shows up. He starts flirting with Chelsea. And meanwhile, we cut back to, to Sally telling Gramps how awesome he is in the script he wrote again. Again, who? And she's like, she's bitching about what a pain in the ass Scott is, and and Donald James Parker's like, oh, don't worry, I'm sure he'll change fundamentally in the next act at some point. <laughs> so, and then we watch people run for uh, two and a half, three minutes. Oh my god, so long. <laughs> so, fun fact here, I did some uh, did some research on the movie. The stock footage from other real life races was actually this film's largest expense. Really? <laughs> That's amazing. Not shocked. They tried to get some Boston Marathon, you know, when they were going oh, through some. Geez. But uh, it, it, it didn't go over very well. They, they, they had to scrap that part of it. So it's where the budget went. Well, right, because you could see brown people in the background. Yeah. <laughs> they had to blur them all out. Yeah. <laughs> we we discovered it, everybody. We found yep. it. Yeah. It was bound to show up eventually. I was just thinking they didn't want this scene to be that explosive. Oh, <laughs> So, but they, we, we watch him race for a while. Gramps ends up, Gramps and Sally end up out racing Scott because he sucks. And like everybody goes to the finish line. Chelsea comes back to get him and she's like, hey, you know, I'll run to the finish line with you if you want. You know, since I had time to like, you know, get a drink of water and apparently change out of all my sweaty clothes into something completely <laughs> dry again. And, and of course, he has to gaw his way through this as well. Why wasn't I good at the thing I just started to do right away? Right. So, oh, okay, so now it's time for them to hand out medals. Still nothing for Chewbacca. <laughs> this is the order in which they hand out the medals. <laughs> Third place in girls 13 and under. That goes to Sally. Directly to first place in girls 14 to 17. That goes to Chelsea. <laughs> Directly to third place in men's 60 and over. Of course, that goes to Donald James Parker. I would like to point out <laughs> that when they announced that he came in third, I wrote as a joke in my notes, but he totally could have come in first. And then the next words out of Sally's mouth were, but you totally could have come in first, Grandpa. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you weren't even trying and you still got a medal. He's like, I cannot help but get a medal. It's, I just can't not get a medal. It's <laughs> I'm surprised that he was even allowed to compete in the 65 and older on account of how young he was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to show his AARP card to even get in. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, and then <laughs> I love to Scott's like, hey, uh, Chelsea, would you like to uh, maybe go out and just then Duke Snyder? Yeah, Duke slides in and he says, hey, you want to go out with me? And she's like, here's my number. Or actually, so, shit, she gives us a real phone number. She sure does. No 555 bullshit here. Yeah. Steve Holt runs in. He's like, Steve Holt, date me. And she's like, okay, here's my phone number. <laughs> Sorry, Scott, what were, you, what were you just saying? Did you say, will you maybe go out with something? What did you say? <laughs> Where did you want me to go out? Scott is just completely sick of getting cucked by Gramps for right. this entire <laughs> film. And at, yeah. at this point, it, it's just it's just too much. He looks at Chelsea like, you whore. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you gave him a real phone number. Right, yeah. You should need at least a 555 five, five something. How dare you? Uh, but yeah, so, so Scott wanders off. And I love this. He wanders over to Sally and Gramps. And Sally's like, wow, every named character in the movie except for Scott got a medal, huh? <laughs> I'm like, you go, Sally. I wanted that crazy announcer to be like, okay, 16 over third place, Gramps. Last place in 16 to 19 is Scott. Those are the four things I announced. There yeah. you go. <laughs> right. All right, so they go to leave. But before they can, Gramps needs to have a heart to heart with Scott. And he starts his heart to heart off by explaining what great shape he's in for a 65 year old. <laughs> Scott, look at my thighs. Look at, <laughs> look at the tendons. Look at the muscles. Like a deer, Scott. I'm like a goddamn kangaroo. <laughs> but he explains that you got to stick with it, Scott, at least through the third act. There's no way you're going to get it in with that attitude, Scott. Do you want to get some pussy or not? Right. Right. And he's like, well, I guess I'd feel better if you took me to lunch. And he's like, how about we go to Chick-fil-A because they're vicious homophobes. Oh, He literally gives them the Chick-fil-A ad. Yep. So, 
Yep. It's just an independent, unasked for ad for, you know, homophobia. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know that Donald James Parker hit up Chick-fil-A like, hey, you know, can I... uh can I get a little bit of a kickback for, I feel uh, for like mentioning? I at least get some free <laughs> waffle fries with every purchase, right? No, absolutely not. But we will hire your actors. They're the exact types that we're going for. Yeah. <laughs> Dear Mr. Filet, you already know me because I am banned from one of your restaurants after what I would call the tube top incident. I am hoping that this peace gesture I made in my most recent film can amend the bridge between us. <laughs> All right, well, I'll tell you what. Suffering through an unsolicited, unpaid, homophobic chicken ad is plenty to earn us another break. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will Scott sufficiently put his left foot in front of his right foot? Will Scott then sufficiently put his right foot in front of his left foot? Will Scott then sufficiently repeat? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the loony conclusion of In Gramps' Shoes. Is it true you believe in magic? Hi, I'm Genetically Modified Skeptic. You know, burnout can take a lot of forms. Lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, or even being unable to fathom what another person's name is short for. Ah, I bet it's Drew Seal Ball. No, that's why there's BetterHelp Online Therapy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Drooby Drooby Doo. No. And best of all, God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash awful. That's BetterHelp.com slash awful. Andrew. Hey, yeah, you got it. No, you didn't let me finish. Andrew Seidel. No, no, my first name is not Andrew Seidel. Beans. All right, Scotty, I, I, I know kids these days do all sort of stuff to distract them while they drive, but I need you to know that that isn't going to happen in my car. There will be no changing the CD or the 8-track. There will be no texting, and there will be no talking. Wait, Grandpa, you don't want me to speak while we drive? That's right. You and I will sit here in total silence while you drive, no matter how long the trip. Complete and total silence. Okay. Hey there, kiddo. You ready for your next driving lesson? I sure am, Grandpa, but I was wondering if you wouldn't mind teaching my friend Eli Bosnick first. Hi, Gramps. Well, sure. Get right in, sport. Shall I go over the basics for you? Oh, no need, Grandpa. No need. Well, Grandpa, what did you think of the driving lesson with Eli? God is dead, and now I know who killed him. That's what I thought. You want to listen to some music? Anything to drown out the screaming. (laughs) And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Mom and Sally in the kitchen chatting about dandelion wine some more when Scott comes in to tell him that he's passed his driver's test. Yeah. He's like, I got my driver's license. I'm going to take a girl on a date. And the sister's like, well, you could drive me around. And I wrote in my notes, Heath has a combination of those two (laughs) ideas. (laughs) I don't even understand what that means. <laughs> so I like that she adds, "Oh, Grandpa's taken care of that pretty well already." Though. Right? <laughs> I'm sure she. Ha- I'm sure he has He's been Sally. riding me all over. T- I mean, driving me all over town. Yeah, <laughs> Sally, you don't have any gas or grass, do you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> so, so mom's like, "Oh, you got your driver's license. We should celebrate with my new boyfriend." And Gramps is like. Really? Act three, we're going to introduce this character? Why would we wait this long? We knew this act was coming. Oh, me. I'm so disappointed in you. Right. Yeah, exactly. But yeah, everybody's a little iffy about mom dating again. And she's she's like, no, even Gramps will like him. He doesn't smoke or drink and he's super religious. Yeah, sounds like a blast, this guy. (laughs) Also, does she imply that it's her boss, or at least her superior in the company? Yes. Oh, does uh, she? Yeah. I missed yes. that. Yes, she, she does. does. He's a big shot around the office, too, so you know he's flush, just just like Gramps. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. <laughs> like blockbuster money. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids all wander off, and, and Gramps and Mom, Amy, have a, have a quick one-on-one here. Gramps is apparently wondering if the movie should be over now. He's like, we already did the 5K. What am I even still doing here, right? Uh, yeah. 
So, uh, yeah, I was thinking about maybe leaving the house. Wait, hold on. Uh, do you have a man lined up to take over ownership of you? Right. And yeah. Yeah. And she's like, yeah, no, uh, me and Peter from the office, who's my boss. We talked about marriage after lunch a few times. Right. Yep. She says lunch a few times. And then it's, are you thinking about getting married? And she's like, yeah, pretty much. We've talked about it. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck's happening? At the third lunch? Yeah. yeah. They're going to have a sad, shitty old person wedding with a bunch of traditions that don't make sense for them. Like their dad can't walk him down the aisle because he's dead. Well, yeah, I mean, he's well, actually looks very young. He looks very, <laughs> very in good, very Spry. good. Spry. You know, DJP's jogging down the aisle. Yeah. In his <laughs> doing laps around her, literally yeah. doing laps around her. I know you want me to wear a suit, but can I still wear my running shoes? <laughs> <laughs> and shorts. I'm going to show off these thighs. Will you walk down the aisle to chariots of fire? It works for me. It's a lot more sense for me. And they end this scene with "I love you," and she's like, well, "Not quite." It goes the other way. That's the fucked up thing is that Amy says, "You know, Dad, I really appreciate you," and Gramps goes, "I love you too," and he's like, "No, you can't just put a two in there. That doesn't count." <laughs> Just to be clear, I didn't say cut, 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 cut. It's it. We have it. We have it. <laughs> you love me. Gramps definitely prematurely emotionally ejaculated there. Yes. Yeah. It, it, it exactly. was sad. He says, I bet you'll tell me you love me before this movie's over. And she's like, well, you wrote the fucking script. So. I bet the fuck I won't. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay. So we cut to after dinner the next day the, with the family meeting mom's new boyfriend. Right. This is Peter. And he is trying way too hard. Okay, yeah, he is. The whole thing's awkward, but just strategically, maybe you don't line up the family like a panel of judges on Boyfriends Got Talent along the couch there, and then treat it like a fucking dog show where yeah. just like grabbing his balls, checking the heat. No. <laughs> oh, I have to say, in this scene, Scott's energy, immaculate. Oh, oh yes. yes. Best scene for Scott. Scott is amazing that peter goes well He's what do you want guy. to talk about scott and scott's like teen suicide <laughs> <laughs> so good <laughs> no let's talk about something that i want to talk about great teen suicide you have any good bits about teen suicide <laughs> fucking peter you know that donald james parker watched a lot of the news in the 90s just that's the first thing that a teenager wants to talk about someone at my school fucking died they killed themselves let's let's talk about it yeah and Gramps has to chime in here. He's like, I just want to say fuck suicide people. <laughs> right. Real quick. Well, Gramps and mom take a minute to blame the suicidal girl for being too weak. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's the Christian answer. If you're sad, uh, you got to just rub some dirt in it. Walk it off. Walk off the suicide. You yeah. must not love Jesus enough. Sally turns to Gramps and she's like, Gramps, did you ever seek the void? And he's like, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> But then, but then Peter's like, I'm not sure I agree exactly with that. And Scott, again, is amazing. He's like, interesting. Peter, <laughs> you talk more now about yeah. suicide. Your, your differing viewpoint to Gramps? Peter, you don't agree with Gramps? Tell me more about this. Right, right, exactly. And, and, and he's like, so what would be the secret to happiness in your mind then, Peter? And Peter's like, your mom's vagina. You know what? Let me rephrase. I'm going to rephrase. <laughs> I'm going to go back. I'm going to, it's a woman that loves you. Okay, yeah. yeah, his answer's pretty fucking good, though. He's like, you know, love and art and helping other people, those are the important things in life. And then Gramps has a rebuttal to that. Right, he like, just starts throwing poop at him. He's like, he's like yeah. no, no, good works. Well, he makes everybody beg him for his opinion. Yeah, right. Well, that's right. <laughs> he's like, well, I guess I shouldn't say what I think that. And everyone's like, no, please, Gramps, is what it says in the script. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us... Tell us what you think about, check my notes here, good deeds and love. They're bullshit. Bullshit, I tell you. Yeah. No, he's like, he's super clear. He's like, you know, Peter, it's not about improving yourself and being a better person. It's about loving Jesus. And Peter's like, you know, this is your movie, right? You're the he <laughs> hero of, okay, all right, man. And then Peter's like, well, okay, if we're trying to do what God wants, wouldn't God have to like, tell us that like right. show up mm. and talk once ever and then donald james parker has to be like counter argument cut but I'm yeah. leaving. <laughs> <laughs> i talk to god all the time cool yeah cool right and then peter literally is like 
cool. Good to know. I'm leaving. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, lo- I have to point out this line, too. You know, Donald James Parker's like, you know, if it was about following what you wanted instead of what Jesus wanted, why, I could be the most popular televangelist to the entire world. But yeah, that's something that you want to be. A televangelist right. is the goal. <laughs> yeah. But he's like, but Jesus would rather I make shitty YouTube movies that get 66,000 views a year. <laughs> <laughs> Most of which are from a podcast that hates me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ho, 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 ho. I have sought the void, Cal. I have sought the void. <laughs> I'm just just vampire university guy with a giant line at the job fair. <laughs> Franklin Graham next to him, like, oh, no. <laughs> Besides for Scott's energy in this, the shit stirring, my favorite bit of this is that the liberal Christian is the one that's getting more triggered and the conservative Christian is just sitting there completely cool-headed. It's so accurate, my yeah. God. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, so everybody leaves, leaving Peter and the mom, Amy, t- together. And I let they just, they linger on this scene just long enough for Peter to go, hey, um, if we did get married, you're... Your dad would move the fuck out, right? Like we could move him the fuck out, and she's like, "Oh yeah, so God, yes. yeah." Don't don't worry. I haven't even told him I loved him. He is. The worst. <laughs> and then they share a very romantic side hug to close the scene <laughs> off. It's great. These two actors aren't married, so Donald James Parker was like, "Well, I can't have you kiss. I won't send you to jail for my movie. So uh, <laughs> just rub your foreheads together like baby tigers." <laughs> <laughs> so, so okay. Now it's dinner the next day. Scott is telling him how difficult his schedule is getting. This will never matter in any fucking way to the movie. Mm -mm, Sure won't. Right. He's like, well, you know, I'm I'm trying to run track and work a job and go to school all at the same time. This is an insane amount of shit to be asking of a 16 year old kid. And then and then, of course, Scrap solves this problem by invoking something from 1943 or some dumb shit. (laughs) <laughs> he's like he says that he should get a job share yeah right it's just like no you tell a, you tell a guy from the tennis thing that he has your job now and then you have it in the winter and then you can both split the nickel at the penny candy store <laughs> i haven't been in the workplace for 20 fucking years <laughs> yeah and and sally of course explains that the coach thinks she's going to be a great runner but not so much scott because he sucks and then he gauze his way out of the scene once again. Yeah. Doesn't Sally say that she gets to run varsity next year? Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very strange for a 13 year old. <laughs> I'm thinking, yeah, they want you to run varsity because you're 35 years old. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and nobody's buying that 13 bullshit anymore. And Gramps is like, you know, maybe I'm pushing Scott too hard. And Sally says, and I quote, you can push me, Gramps. I like the challenge. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, I have in my notes immediately at that point. Be careful what you wish for, Sally. I'll show you a real challenge, keeping my <laughs> erection while we do this. Oh, Jesus <laughs> Christ. And then, okay, it's later on. Gramps is doing <laughs> d- dumbbell shrugs. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know what to call this. Nonsense. Scott walks in and he's like, Arm day, getting yoked, you know. <laughs> he asked him where he got them. He's like, where'd you get those? <laughs> and Chris is like, I got these units of, of mass at the local sporting goods store, getting yoked. Yeah, it's yeah. so dumb. Have you ever seen one of those ladies that like power walks with the five pound weights? Mm-hmm. Mm, the mom He's walk. doing that without the power walk. Yes. <laughs> right. So yeah, so, but Scott has come in to challenge Gramps to a weekly two-mile race until Scott can beat him. Oh, my God. This whole movie is about fucking racing, and they never just do a single lap around a track. It's always got to be the fucking... Okay, let's play mousetrap, but human size. Yeah. No, so so then we get... I actually... This, this is a three-minute and 12-second running montage. Sure is. They had to use the whole song. That was the condition of this fucking singer songwriter. Was that the okay? But my, you have to use my whole fucking song in your montage. Right. And to be clear, it's a running montage of Donald James Parker and whoever the fuck this teenager are. It's not like great runners. So we're just watching Donald James Parker jog a little faster than I do when I have an IBS incident for three <laughs> minutes and twelve seconds. Well, we watch push-ups, not 
Donald James Parker, of course, and sit ups, yeah. not Donald James Parker, of course. Uh, but yeah, mostly mostly running. <laughs> and and Scott get, uh, getting yoked by curling one pound weights, and he's yeah. all like sweating it out to slowly curl this tiny little weight. Hey, he's he's not going for bulk; he's going for tone. Like, right? Man, I'm sorry, <laughs> sure, nothing wrong with that. So, but yeah, and by the end of the montage, Scott has beat. Gramps at a race, and I'm like, isn't that what the whole fucking movie was about? <laughs> Scott might as well run up and be like, okay, Gramps, what are the stakes of the movie now? You're right. <laughs> yeah, and he's like, ah, finally I beat you. Eat shit, old man. And Gramps is like, I'm really proud of you. And he's like, well, you're fucking up my revenge thing, you asshole. <laughs> but then, just we are about to kick this shit into high gear. Oh, yeah, we are. Just then, drunk abusive dad shows up now we have not met this character so they have to establish that he's drunk abusive dad so they have him finish a beer on his way up to the port (laughs) he might as well like finish a beer crumple a photo of him and his family and then head up to the porch oh yeah we got it my first impression when i see the dad is is that john goodman just a foot shorter (laughs) (laughs) so he goes stumbling up drunkenly stumbling up the porch and he's like Amy, come out here. I want to talk to you. And then Scott runs out and he's like, no, I'm going to beat you up if you try to mess with my mom this time. And then he pushes him off the porch, Mm -hmm. which which was fun. I I enjoyed watching the dad fall. (laughs) But Scott yells at that point. He's like, push you off the porch. Ah, like a <laughs> Wilhelm scream. Yeah. And then he's like, yeah. did I just scream? He feels like you would have. Okay. Yeah. I don't know how much of it was actually intentional. I'm sure they wanted this to be incredibly unsettling, but the poor editing and filming here made this so much genuinely more intensely scary, unnerving. I thought that I might actually witness a prop incident <laughs> <laughs> and the violence would be real. That's fair. Cause yeah, cause just then, Abusive dad gets up and he goes back to his car to get his gun. Mm. And then Alec Baldwin steps yeah, out. Yeah, right. Car. <laughs> oh, no. Don't worry. I checked it for you, buddy. Go in. Yeah. <laughs> so then, so they start wrestling for the gun. Gramps jumps in between abusive dad and Scott and gets shot bloodlessly because he wasn't going to mess up his fucking running shirt over this scene. And then he does some death acting. His death oh acting. Okay, God. podcast listener, <laughs> if as we've been doing this podcast, you have found our imitation of him in a high falsetto irritating, <laughs> I would encourage you to watch his death monologue, which is truly <laughs> sillier than anything we've done as an imitation of him for the entire length of this podcast. <laughs> Dude is just edging the whole time. He's just so close. <laughs> The little mouth movements he makes in between talking. I can't believe he's not making fun of his movie when he does that. (laughs) It seems like he's dying of soup that's a little too hot for his mouth. (laughs) (laughs) This is where my best of comes in. Oh, when he says, yeah, I've reached the finish line. Oh, it's it's. (laughs) <laughs> this is the true climax of the film. And oh. and that has, yeah, I do mean two things with that. <laughs> yeah, and, and for the blood at the very end of the scene, he's got his hand on his tummy. Yes. And then it cuts and his hand has a very small amount of ketchup on it. It's a whole Chick-fil-A packet. Yes, full exactly. Of exactly. That's what I had as well. I was like, well, wow, they used that whole packet. <laughs> you just cut to him scraping the uh, ketchup off with waffle fries after the cut, you know? <laughs> It was a really clever move to use a red shirt in this scene because they could use significantly less ketchup. Right. Too. That's right. <laughs> so, but he dies at length. He die. Oh, uh, mom says she loves him just as, as he's dying. And he's like, see, I told you. And then he dies. Right. I wrote the movie. <laughs> so then we cut to mom. She's like, all right, kids. Well, you know, Gramps left a will, but he also left notes for you guys. And and she explains what each of them is getting, right? But like fucking Dom Pardo or something. Yeah. I also just, there's a tiny moment during the will reading where Sally's like, why did God let grandpa die? And mom's like, that's a fucking great question, Sally. <laughs> Moving on. Anyways, he gave you some money <laughs> and some fucking insurance. Um, as to, yeah, God can do anything he wants, right? That's a good thing. Uh, yep, I think yep. he really wants to hang out with Gramps right now, you know. 
I mean, because he's so sexually attractive. Right. To God, yes. Probably. He looks so, looks so young for his age. Yeah. But so we learn that Gramps left Scott, his car and six years worth of insurance money. <laughs> and so that Sally wouldn't be left out. He left her enough money to buy his car and six years worth of insurance money. If I was Scott, I would blow that whole wad of cash out there in the park. Oh, yeah. oh, fuck yeah, Personally. man. Yeah, just buy drugs and become a plant slave. Yeah. <laughs> it's just so silly. The the like little pathetic fantasy that Donald has to engage in is just like, right, because it's his movie. Grandpa left us a million dollars. We'll never want for anything again. Here is my coupon book, which is only half used. <laughs> and a, and a, yogurt, a frozen yogurt card with six stamps. <laughs> this is a, this is a 94 Nissan Sentra. There's a blue book value. Very good. Scott, you know how many times we can eat at Luby's with all this? Right? <laughs> so... Well, oh, and this is also, of course, where mom has to explain that it was actually her that had money problems the whole time. And there's like, oh, if we were going to reveal it like that, then what was the point of having that as an element in the story? Right. Great question. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. And and then they, they all fantasize about how Gramps is probably jogging with Jesus or something. Mm hmm. You see the you see the place where there is only one set of footprints. <laughs> yeah. That's where Jesus got shins once. <laughs> <laughs> so so Scott heads over to Chelsea's place. Apparently, Chelsea missed Gramps' funeral for a cross-country meet. Why? You didn't have to put that in the movie. It's his fucking movie. I'm <laughs> oh, sorry, I'm a, but you know, I, I'm a pretty serious student athlete. No, I get it. I get it. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, sorry you had to miss the, the cross-country meet for your grandpa's funeral. And he's like, so am I, curiously. So am I. <laughs> <laughs> there's also this bizarre moment okay someone help me out with this where scott explains that gramps's cross necklace from before deflected the bullet to a different fatal spot but it still killed him <laughs> <laughs> why why add that they say that it deflected it to a different place which allowed Gramps a few extra seconds of lucidity so that he could punch the dude in the face. Oh, That's so that he could beat for. up the guy who shot yeah. Jesus Christ. Right. Just so flash cut to heaven, God being like, all right, we're going to do the cross stopping a bullet thing, but... Not stopping, necessarily. <laughs> it's just going to go to the kidney. <laughs> okay. Because I really want to hang out with Donald James Okay, Parker. what if it just bounces back and hits the shooter? What if we do that? Uh, it was now, you see, I have already done, I already locked it in. I already hit... Enter. I hit okay, send. we just need to workshop these things. But God, yep. you just really, you know, <laughs> ask questions before you start doing stuff. They had to have Gramps die because that's the only way that Donald James Parker can be analogous to Jesus himself. Right. Right. I'm actually surprised this is the first, I believe, the first time we've seen Donald J. Parker's character die at the end of one of these. And that's shocking to me. Scott is very moved by this because he says that he now understands the Christian message now that someone's died for him. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, that this only makes sense if Gramps was the one also holding the gun and being like, I'm going to shoot myself in the chest. Right. You, yeah. Scott. <laughs> right. So, but Scott tells Chelsea that he wants to be just like Gramps when he grows up. And Chelsea says again, and I quote, you'll have to be an amazing fit person to fill Gramps's shoes. <laughs> If the character's dead, they're still compliment. <laughs> You'll never be that sexually virile, but it's a good goal, Scott. It's a good goal. <laughs> oh, he also explains to Chelsea that he needs to go now to the prison where they're holding his dad and forgive him for killing Gramps. Mm -hmm. Nope. No, you don't. You sure don't. That seems like it would be an unnecessarily traumatic thing to go through. Yeah, there's an interesting uh, idea in Christianity that you forgive people who do terrible things and probably don't deserve forgiveness. There's nothing good that could come of that. But, you know, if there are people that do something just minutely wrong, like loving somebody who does not harm anyone to love, then right, fuck or them. watching They're pornography. Not yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. Or being a warlock. You know, <laughs> yeah, same as Hitler. <laughs> <A> vampire. <laughs> So, okay, so now we cut to, we jump cut to nine months later, and Scott is about to run in the big track meet that we haven't set up or heard about until this very moment, right? And we should point out, by the way, that part of Gramps' will was to give 
Scott his old running shoes or his his best running shoes, the ones that he was going to wear for his very last race so that the whole Ingrams' shoes thing makes sense. So it's before the race. He's talking to Chelsea, and they're all talking about how nobody can ever beat Duke Snyder, the amazing man tits runner. Center fielder for the Brooklyn Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> so, but Peter believes in Scott. Apparently, mom's boyfriend is still around nine months later. Mm-hmm. He's a major character. Well, you know, grandpa died, so he technically won the theology <laughs> debate. That, that, no, that's true. That's true. I mean, her dad's dead, so he, she just belongs to him now. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. she had to be paid. Her ownership had to be, be left her to Peter in his will. Yeah. Okay. Exactly, yeah. That's perfect sense. You also get a note, Peter. So they all pray for Scott's victory. Peter explains that if it wasn't for Gramps, he would still be Christian incorrectly, even to this day. So Yeah, just, uh, sorry. I, I know this is apropos of literally nothing, but I just want to say that Grandpa was right earlier in the movie when we mildly disagreed about the religion we share. Yes, exactly. So, yeah, so we cut back over to Scott and Chelsea get ready for the big race. Duke comes up to flirt with Chelsea some more, wants to know if if she's going to go to the prom with him. She's like, I'll let you know by the end of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and the movie forgot to make Duke the bad guy until now. So he's just like being a giant asshole for no, just last second to make it yeah. bad. And then, oh, then yeah. Scott can beat him. Right, so Scott comes over, they pray together. Duke is like, I don't want to pray. I'll leave. This is dumb, dumb prayer shit. Duke saying no to the prayer is one of my favorite moments of the movie. They're just like, do you want to pray with us, Duke? And he's like, oh, you're serious. (laughs) I'm going to go. No, I'm just going to run faster than you. (laughs) Yeah. So Scott says a prayer with Chelsea, gives her a nice romantic side hug. I love that Chelsea prays that God give him the strength and endurance to run the race, not just today, but every day. (laughs) <laughs> I'm thinking I sincerely hope that Gramps left Scott's and Viagra in the will too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so they they start the big race. They obviously wanted to use chariots of fire, found out how expensive that was and asked somebody's <laughs> niece to get as close as she could without violating the copyright. Right? <laughs> this is this is where we get Heath's best worst as well. What was it? I yeah, the, the It's blur. definitely the high school sign. The high I didn't school want to sign? step on your joke. But it's definitely the high school's name. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, so the, I, I was I was dying of curiosity at the moment, too. <laughs> but then, of course, they start running. Scott has to start flashing back to Gramps talking about all of the important Jesus stuff in the movie. They even they fucking flash back to the cicada scene. Yeah, they do. <laughs> Remember, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> And he starts flashing back to conversations that Gramps had with Sally when he wasn't there. So fucking stupid. So anyway, so the, we, we watch him run in slow motion again. Crowd super into it. And Scott wins by a nose. They try to do a photo finish, but no one involved in the making of this movie has any fucking idea how you'd begin to film that. Right. So they very clearly just had these actors like place their foots down at the same time. Yeah. Uh-huh. Didn't it feel like he should have won by the cross swinging out in front of him? Because <laughs> he's wearing yes. that. That's a big deal about putting on the cross before the race. Right. No, that's too clever for Donald James Parker, though, unfortunately. Zooms in and Angel Gramps is reaching his finger out to cut the cord. Yes. <laughs> Better movie than what they made, Heath. Better movie than what they made. So he could, Scott finishes the race. Now, they don't know. It's a photo finish, right? They don't know yet that he's won. Scott says, this one was for you, Gramps. Oh, and I'll be, and Jesus. Uh, also, and Jesus. Shit. In that order. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so then the announcer comes out and he's like, we have ourselves a winner. It's Scott. And we're like, yeah, well, of course it was. It was yeah, obviously it was, it was Scott. And then he's like, and finishing in second place with an identical time. And I'm like, that's not second place then. That's tying that for first. <laughs> uh, is Duke. Duke is pissed yeah oh yeah no he's he's furious he he goes off to murder some puppies or something mm-hmm. he's already gotten cucked by scott once and now it happens again my god well he even gets cucked by the from the scout from the university of tennessee that might just have a scholarship for scott <laughs> i think it's university of texas so we're talking about ut out here in austin i 
if Scott goes to UT, he's going to lose his virginity instantly. All the God stuff is going to go away as soon as he climaxes like yeah. Gramps. The minute he's in a city with more than six people in it, God and Gramps are gone from his yeah. life. <laughs> Same if he goes to Vampire U. Either yeah, way. that's yeah, true. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> Uh, but if it is University of Tennessee, he should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> that would be all right. If Vampire University had come over next and just been like, please consider also working with us. <laughs> <laughs> We'd have gotten here earlier, but daylight is tough for us. You know how it is. So, yeah. So he's like, oh, I, I never thought I could win. And Chelsea's like, I believed in you. And I'm like, well, then why did you why did you pray? Then? <laughs> he could have got a, a scholarship in blood sport. Blood sport. <laughs> but, um, well done. Vampire you. So yeah, so then we have this incredible moment. I love this moment so fucking much because it's like three different, it's like Heath asking for a date, right? There are three different false starts. He's like, you know, Chelsea, there's something I wanted to talk to you about. And she's like, really? Is is there? And he's like, I feel like we could fix high school if we eliminated clicks. <laughs> she's like, real that? What? Oh, uh, sure. And another thing, Chelsea, about you and me. Yes, we should protest the Harry Potter series yes! at the oh library. My God. Oh, my God. Yes! <laughs> oh, peak character development. That's what that is. <laughs> That's what Gramps would have wanted. <laughs> I'm like, no, he would have wanted to snuggle up with a 14-year-old, actually, is what he would have wanted. <laughs> Even though Chelsea is a Christian in this, you can see her dry up like Ben Shapiro's <laughs> fucking wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she literally is just like, oh, fun. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's like, also, 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 um, <clears throat> would you like to go to the prom with me? And she's like, oh, fucking finally. <laughs> yeah, so it's not exactly like Heath, but uh, yeah, yeah. It's close. yeah, I didn't care. So. My flirting style is definitely a balk in baseball for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so and then, of course, she says yes. And, and, and Duke gets cucked one more time. And then we watch the family put Gramps' shoes on the mantle. Imagine how awful it would be to actually keep sweaty running shoes on your mantle. <laughs> oh, you forgive the smell. We just keep spraying them, but you know, they're just a bad smell <laughs> in, in a solid form. Yeah, that's it. And and that wraps it up. That is yet another installment in the Chip Rossetti verse. Don't worry, there are more. Fuck yeah, there are. Anytime Fuck we're feeling yeah, there down, are. there will be another one. Oh, I feel like there's a chance. There's a chance. <laughs> That Chip Rossetti and Donald James Parker team up with Mark Wahlberg for a movie. I think that's a possibility in the universe right now, right? I, I don't think so, but I hope so. You know, I'm, yeah, I'm hopeful but doubtful. But hey, why? Center not? of my vision board. He dedicated he... himself to doing Christian movies from now on. That's Didn't true. He? That's true, you guys. How long until Kevin Sorbo gets in on this? I know that he's really itching for some acting gigs, yeah. but he just can't get them because of his conservative views. How long until he's in one of these movies? Okay, well that that one is inevitable. Yeah, <laughs> I'll die that day. I'll <laughs> die of happiness that day. So, Drew, was it everything that you hoped it would be? Oh, and more and more. <laughs> so, well, I'll tell you what, I can't thank you enough for joining us. Obviously, we ask an awful lot of our guests. And just quickly, if our listeners wanted to hear more from you, where should they go? Uh, just look up Genetically Modified Skeptic on YouTube. I will pop up, check out some of those videos. And if you like it, subscribe. And, you know, if you really like it, I do have a Patreon as well. Awesome. And of course, we'll have your channel linked on our show notes as well. And well, that's going to do it for our review of In Gramps' Shoes. Well, that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to circle back around to the beginning of this track next week. So Eli, tell us what's on deck. We'll be watching a sci-fi film about persecuted Christians who escaped to Mars on a spaceship called Mayflower 2. Fuck. Yeah, we will. <laughs> I'm so what? excited. Cause, cause Obi-Wan's coming out. Yeah, no, it'll be, it'll be topical. All right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 353 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Genetically Modified Skeptic for hanging out with us today and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors that help make the show go. If you like, got yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five star review, sharing the show on all your various social media platforms and telling a friend. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scaling Alias, Citation Needed, D&D Minus, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and the people drafts on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm an illusionist. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, 
We'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. The brand new running shoes on the mantle are full of pus and blood right? from blisters of using new shoes <laughs> in a track meet. Now, Donald James Parker went on to learn how transphobic J.K. Rowling was, and now he's conflicted. Stay tuned for Donald James Parker's newest movie, The Podcasters Who Made Fun of My Movie and Got Eaten by Bears, and We're <laughs> Super Sorry Because I Totally Would Have Taught Them to Beatbox. <laughs> <laughs> I would literally be 0% surprised if we showed up in one of his movies one of these days. Oh, God, I would love it so much. I just want to hear the... Falsetto beatbox noise. A Ricky Raw! A Ricky Ricky Raw! He hired a guy to install a window unit in his house. I mean... All right. Two listeners reached out to be like, Hey, man, um, you know you can just... And I was like... You can just. <laughs> oh, God. Of all of the Christian filmmaker, film star people that we, you know, might eventually meet at some point, like, he's the one I both want to meet the most and the least. Yep. Right? Because, like, he, yeah, he's just, he, he's, he's just viciously, there's, there's nothing I could say or do to him that I would feel bad about later. Right. But there's also nothing that I could do or say to him that would feel like enough. Right. Anyway. The guy is so in line with what my family is <laughs> kind of kind of like. Really? Oh, really? That, yeah, Perfect. it's like uh, that. That is my dad's side of the family. Oh, the no. guy's probably related to me. <laughs> <laughs> the preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC. Copyright twenty twenty two. All rights reserved. For the love of fall, Starbucks pumpkin spice lattes and pumpkin cream cold brews are back. Smooth espresso dashed with pumpkin pie spice and velvety whipped cream. Or cold brew topped with pumpkin cream cold foam fit for the season. Your pumpkin awaits. Order today in the Starbucks app. When you think of First Energy, you probably think about the men and women who keep the lights on. What you might not know is that they're also lighting the way in our community. See their stories at firstenergycorp.com slash lighttheway.